If you haven't watched parts one and two of this scambate, then please watch them now by clicking this link. In part one, we sent our scammer Uchenna a package containing electronic products and $22,000. In part two, scammer Uchenna and his brother travelled from Nigeria to Benin to collect our made-up package from a made-up delivery company. The first little hiccup was that the intended driver was unavailable after a heavy night. With no other driver available, the only option was to reschedule for the next day. Unless the scammers wanted to go home and try again next week. Either way, all their expenses would of course be paid. Uchenna replied saying that he would wait until the next day. He suggested the driver arrived at lunchtime and asked for the driver details. A quote explained that even by leaving at first light, it would likely take a random seven hours before our imaginary driver completed his imaginary journey. So he would be there around 3 to 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon. A quote described what the van would look like. For non-Arabic speakers, that means God willing which seemed very appropriate. We again asked for the photo of the two scammers outside the hotel, just to help identification, of course. And we told the scammers the name of the driver, Juju Amdalani. So we now had created three employees of the delivery company. Juju was to be the driver and the most interesting character by far. Uchenna was now impressed and agreed to wait for the driver to come the next day. First thing the next morning, Uchenna was waiting and hoping to hear from Juju the driver. So our character Juju started writing to Uchenna too. Juju was a bit more casual with his writing, and used the sort of pidgin dialect a driver in that region would likely use. He said he would be there in eight hours, but would give an update in one hour when he reached the next village. Juju asked for their room number and hinted at using their shower after such a long journey. A quote confirmed that drivers were trained to make regular updates and that Juju had access to all the information Uchenna had provided. Crucially, that included the biometric profile pictures Uchenna had supplied. Juju also had $2,000 to settle the scammer's expenses, so there was nothing to worry about. He also made himself unavailable because that would make what was about to happen more interesting. Uchenna tried to be lazy and simply sent the driver the photo he had taken yesterday outside the hotel. But Juju was having none of that and demanded recent pictures. While Uchenna was bored for the second day in his hotel, we thought it would be nice to send a message from Cliff, who was enjoying his extravagant shopping weekend in Paris. Cliff innocently said he expected everything was now completed and Uchenna had returned home to Nigeria. Uchenna did send Juju an updated picture outside the hotel. If there really had been a delivery plan, then no doubt that stripy suit would have made Uchenna unmissable. His brother looks less happy than yesterday. The scam baiting code of ethics appropriately disallows homophobia to be used in baits, so there is no homophobia implied here. But Juju did start taking a liking to the two men. Two men from Nigeria where homosexuality is illegal. This should create some friction, uncomfortableness, and give us some material later on in the bait. So Juju said he had enjoyed seeing Uchenna's biometric photos, and of course his sexy striped suit. Juju assumed that Uchenna was gay, and that his brother was actually his husband. Uchenna replied with a very straight and likely uncomfortable, thank you for liking my pictures. Juju updated on his imaginary progress towards the two scammers. And when the update stopped, Uchenna chased for info. Juju had to break the news that an unavoidable collision with a goat had caused a problem, but he still planned to be there in two hours. He said he was very much looking forward to some romantic time with Eugenia. A little later, Akwode, the zonal manager, updated Uchenna on the accident. 
Unfortunately, the accident had been more serious than first thought, and Juju's van needed repairing. Aquode apologised for the unavoidable delay and suggested the two scammers made the most of the extended wait time by getting a good meal. After all, Juju would be covering all their expenses. He also made more excuses for why he might not be contactable for a while. Lucena asked Juju to drive carefully for the remainder of the journey and sympathised with Aquode over the driver's goat accident. We continue to create problems. Next, Juju said the mechanic needed two hours to fix the radiator and that his phone battery was also dying. Two hours later, Uchenna asked for an update. But the news wasn't good. The car was still in pieces and the mechanic guessed it would be another hour. Juju said he was taking the opportunity to get some food and a beer. A couple of hours later, Uchenna had to chase for information again. He was concerned he would face another night away from home in the hotel if the driver couldn't get there soon. Aquode said that Juju had been uncontactable due to his phone battery problem, and he gave more bad news to the scamming duo. The new radiator part could not be sourced until the following morning. We tried to get the scammers to travel again, this time saying that as Juju was going to have to stay the night in Bohicon, it made more sense for them to meet him there in the morning. We promised them a nice hotel and good cuisine. Juju would even give them a lift back to the Nigerian border the following day. Uchenna didn't take the bait. He said they had already spent more and stayed longer than expected. He said he would wait for Juju to come the following morning. Getting a good night's sleep before his morning drive was the last thing on Juju's mind. Because he'd been given overnight expenses, he'd arranged for two girls to come to his room, plus some drink and drugs. He regretted Uchenna's decision not to join him, as he would have liked to have got together with Uchenna. Uchenna ignored the propositioning and tried to get Juju to focus. In the morning, he asked Juju to do all he could to get Juju back on track. He nagged a quote too. Unfortunately, Akwodi hadn't had any luck reaching Juju that morning. And as the day wore on, any loyalty Uchenna may have felt for the driver disappeared. He told Akwodi he had not heard from Juju and attached Juju's drunken email from the night before so Akwodi could see what they were dealing with. Akwodi realised he should intervene and called the hotel. Juju was still in the room with his two lady friends. Akrodi admitted that giving Juju some overnight cash might have been the cause of the problem. Akrodi didn't approve of the young man's choices, but he couldn't prevent him from doing what he wanted. Juju then awoke, confused and hungover. The two girls were still there, but after breakfast he said he would go to see the mechanic. He asked Uchenna to remind him if they were meeting in Bohicon or Seme. Uchenna repeated what he had said the night before. He was staying put and Juju needed to come to him in semi. Juju explained that he wouldn't know anything till he had spoken to the mechanic and he wouldn't be doing that until after coffee and breakfast with the girls. We basically told Uchenna to chill out and wait. Uchenna tried to push Juju to agree to midday. But a little later, Juju said that they were still waiting for the new radiator and that he and the mechanic were now enjoying the wait, having a few beers on the terrace. He boasted about the previous night of sex, drink and drugs. One of the girls had been so good he'd kept her with him. Uchenna sent Juju's message straight to Akwode. Akwode said he had talked to Juju and it would indeed be a few more hours. He urged the two scammers again to enjoy the wait by having something nice to eat, on expenses of course. Akwode again made his excuses for why he might not be available for a while. We want to chain it to have to deal with Juju, no matter how frustrating Juju makes it. Uchenna asked Juju to make sure Juju kept to the arrangements. But when Akwode didn't reply, he did go back to emailing Juju. Time for the scam baiters to take things up a gear. Juju sent a long email to Uchenna. Last night, Juju had unpacked Uchenna's parcel. His paid girlfriend had wanted a chocolate, 
till Juju had opened the box of chocolates and found the $22,000 stuffed inside. He reminded the scammer that it was illegal to send money in this way, and Juju now wanted to split the money and electronic goods with Uchenna. And of course, they would need to keep this quiet, including the police and a quote. If Uchenna didn't want to do that deal with Juju, or if Uchenna told anyone, then the driver would simply take everything and run to his family in the neighbouring country, Togo. The scammer believed our story and tried to keep Juju sweet by agreeing to compensate him. A few hours later, Juju sent the scammer an update. He had travelled now to a place called Gran Popo. We thought we would try to get the scammers to travel there instead. To add to any annoyance, we address Uchenna as Mumu, meaning fool in pidgin. He explained that after another night of passion, he had headed for his home country of Togo. Now that he was rich, his plan was to run away and the replacement radiator story had just been to buy some time from his boss, Akwode. He had picked a place close to the Togo border and only 120 kilometres from the scammer's hotel. Juju's proposal, fuelled by Uchenna's sexy biometric pictures, was for Uchenna to join him in bed in Gran Popo before they shared the proceeds of the scam. So, will Uchenna bite and head for Gran Popo? He had already made the long, slow journey from Nigeria to Benin. After four days in two budget hotels in the middle of nowhere, could we really tempt him to go further towards Togo? Uchenna tried to get help from Akwode, not knowing, of course, that whoever he tried talking to, it was always the scambators. So, Akwode explained that Juju was no longer communicating with him, probably due to drink and Juju's impulsive enjoyment of legal homosexuality in Benin. Akwode suggested Uchenna should continue on to the meeting place. Uchenna begged Akwode to understand how unreasonable Juju was being and included Juju's last email. Meanwhile, Juju sent more impatient and explicit messages to try and encourage the scammer to travel. Uchenna was growing desperate now. He lied that he'd arranged for compensation for Juju to try and tempt him to not disappear into Togo. He also grew impatient with Akwode, questioning why they would employ such an irresponsible driver. We, or rather Akwode, pretended to be impatient with the scammer, questioning why the driver was communicating with Uchenna, but not with them, their boss. A quote implied this might be a fight between two gay lovers and that he could not approve of such a thing. A quote was a Muslim after all. Juju the driver sent more impatient emails, threatening to cross over the border if Uchenna didn't arrive soon and again anticipating the physical fun they could enjoy together. Uchenna finally said he was coming. Of course, saying he was coming did not mean much. He's a scammer after all. Juju agreed to wait for him, but we asked suspiciously if Uchenna was trying to trap him or involve the police. We knew, of course, the scammer would not do that. The the last person a scammer wants to speak to is the police, and we threw in some more sexy talk. Uchenna confirmed he was coming. Juju confirmed the meeting place and asked Uchenna to send proof when he had completed the long journey. With perfectly bad timing, we decided as a quote, to say we had reported Juju missing to the local police. We can guess at the scammer's plan at this point. He asked a quote for the driver's photo and details. Most likely he planned to spot Juju before Juju spotted him and use the element of surprise to attack and rob him. Pleasingly, the scammer also talked of the disgrace and destruction we had caused. Now that would be a Google review to be proud of. We ignored Uchenna's message for a good while and then replied as a quote, voicing more suspicions around the scammer and Juju's relationship. We could now tell the scammer Juju had heard the police were looking for him and Juju, of course, thought it was the scammer Uchenna who had involved them. Eventually, though, Uchenna said he had arrived in Gran Popo. We didn't know if it was true, so Juju reminded the scammer 
he needed to take a photo of them in front of the hotel. Strengthening our theory that Ichena planned to rob Juju, Ichena again tried to find out where Juju was, whilst reassuring him that he could trust the scammers. But we insisted Uchenna provide proof he was there, plus the usual awkward sex references. Had the scamming duo really been tempted to travel to the other side of Benin, to the border with Togo? Uchenna's next email, claiming he was at the hotel, contained the necessary proof. They really don't look happy now. Juju was pleased his handsome friends had come to see him, but said he was still suspicious of it being a trap. We tried for a photo of the two brothers kissing each other outside the hotel. We said Juju would be there in 30 minutes. By this point, Uchenna was willing to say anything. He said he wanted to kiss Juju because Juju was all he wanted now. We tried again for the kissing photo, but Uchenna stood firm. We tried again, but kissing his brother in public remained a step too far. He just continued to reassure Juju that the two of them could be happy together. But Juju became suspicious of the scammer's motives. No kissing photo, no deal. But Uchenna stopped replying. Realising Juju and Akwode had become suspicious of him, the scammer wrote to the top, to Cliff, who was also, of course, us. The scammer brought Cliff up to date with what had happened since they last communicated. He explained they had been in Benin for four days now and that the driver had seen his sexy photos and wanted to have sex with him. Cliff, of course, was still shopping in Paris and could not reply to any of Uchenna's emails, no matter how desperate. Red Bulldy Juju, on the other hand, was still willing to try. He explained that although he had moved on to Togo, he would be willing to go back over the border to meet them and could be there in 20 minutes. Uchenna agreed to wait. And wait. And wait. Eventually, much later that night, Juju explained he had not been able to cross the border because the police were looking for him. Crossing the border had not been possible. He was all set to try again in the morning so would enjoy another night of sex in his hotel and some drugs, of course. Uchenna didn't know what to do. He decided to go further, back up the chain, and wrote to Sister Dave. As Sister Dave, we explained that because Uchenna had not communicated with us up to now, we didn't know anything. Sister Dave was surprised to hear there had been any trouble. But she could try and get an update in the morning. Early the next morning, a hungover Juju contacted Uchenna but the heavy, steamy night meant he needed to catch up on his sleep. He offered to meet Uchenna at 10am, before the two of them sharing a bed, the cash and the products. The scammer then went quiet. We guessed he was travelling, but didn't know whether he was travelling to meet Juju or returning home to Nigeria. Cliff told the scammer he had read a report about the missing driver. There were lots of accusations flying around, but importantly, the package had been insured, so Uchenna would, of course, be compensated. Akwode, too, said he had read the report, and all his concerns were for the poor, missing Juju. Perhaps something terrible had happened to him. Cliff got information that it looked like Juju had crossed into Togo the night before. Cliff's theory was that Juju might have fled to Togo, where he had family. Juju tried one more time to lure Uchenna over the border. But it seems our Uchenna and his brother had started their return to Nigeria. He also gave us some more review comments we wish we could have captured on Google Reviews. The fictional Akwode confirmed the fictional police were searching for the fictional Juju who may have run to his fictional family in Togo. Akwodo said there would be an investigation and hoped Uchenna would meet him in Benin to help with the investigation and insurance claim. But it seemed Uchenna had lost faith in the delivery company and he wrote to Sister Dave again. 
He explained the whole story to her, how they had spent all their money and how the delivery company had been playing games with them without ever meeting them. All their money had been spent on food and lodgings and now they were stranded in Benin. He said the rude driver was a drug addict and had been harassing them. He was heartbroken. A few hours later, he confirmed again that they were returning to Nigeria. He said he had taken legal advice and was trying to trace the delivery company details. He shared all the details of the biometrical identification procedure, and that even though he had complied with everything, the delivery driver had become abusive, saying that he was a mumu and gay, as too was his brother. Uchenna explained that he had tried to ignore Juju's insults and cooperate with him, but Juju continued to abuse him sexually and would run away if we did not go to meet him. But he kept moving to different places. To be fair to the scammer, it was a pretty accurate report. He also, of course, talked about compensation. Sister Dave was shocked to hear what had happened to each other, and shocked that a reverend was accused of being gay, and visiting different hotels to meet a man. Sister Dave worried about the impact of such accusations against Uchenna, as, following the approval of his application, he was now a member of our church. Sister Dave hoped that the biometric pictures didn't ever become more public, such as them appearing on YouTube, I guess. Sister Dave tried to get Eugenia to focus on the next part of the scam bait, taking part in an insurance claim, apart from the cash as that had been transported illegally, so that was now lost. Having got no joy from Sister Dave, Uchenna went even further back up the chain and called Lenny again, still not realising he was talking to a phone bot. You'll hear Uchenna's friend, presumably that's his legal advisor, prompting him Hello, in the background. This is Lenny. Let's see how that call went. Hello, good afternoon, Robert Leonardo. Is there your, your son, Pastor Uchenna? Uh, sorry, I... I... I can barely hear you there. Okay, uh, this is your son, Pastor Uchenna, calling from charity, from uh, Kanamate Charity Foundation. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, how are you? Oh, good, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, we are having some challenges here. So uh, about the uh, parcel uh, the church sent to the uh, the, the children, so, but uh, I would like to uh, write everything in details and send to you because uh, the courier, uh, the delivery, the shipping company, they, they are not, they are not, uh, they are not reliable. So uh, they are playing tricks and they are, uh, they are playing games on us. They don't want to deliver the parcel. So I will send uh, all the details to you. I will send, and uh, our uh, right. lawyer. Uh, is working on it. Our lawyer wants to file a case against them, you know, and we need uh, uh, your support because uh, we need the church support so that we can trust the, uh, the, 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 the Korea shipping company to know if they are real or not. So I will send all the details to you, okay? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, someone, someone did... did say last week, you know, someone did call last week about the same thing. Was was that you? No. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, what was, what was your name again? Yeah, Pastor Uchenna. Pastor Uchenna. Kanamate. Pastor Uchenna from Kanamate Charity Foundation, Nigeria. Well, it, it's funny that you should call because my third eldest, Larissa, uh, she she was talking about this uh, just just like. He tried writing to Lenny instead. He explained that there had been delays, and that is why he'd not contacted Lenny for a while. Lenny, being a little elderly and confused, didn't really understand Duchenna's explanation. So he remained happy to have donated and excited to see the children with their gifts and so positive and confident in Uchenna's abilities. Time for Cliff to reappear. 
Cliff was concerned about the serious allegations being made. He said that Juju was claiming that Uchenna had wanted to seduce him and threatened him to obtain sexual favours. Cliff's opinion was that the insurance company would refuse to pay out over a quarrel between gay lovers. Uchenna tried to simplify the situation for Lenny. Everything sounds so crap and fraud. There was no trace of the delivery company and the workers looking crap and fraud. Unfortunately, Lenny's memory failed him and he couldn't even remember who Uchenna was. With Uchenna losing faith in everybody, the scam bait was coming to an end. We did try to introduce Nancy DeLorean from the legal department to try and get more statements from the scammer. And Sister Dave passed on messages she received from the delivery company, which showed Mr. Uchenna had been uncooperative, had indulged in homosexual activity in Benin with his travelling partner, had attempted to seduce the delivery driver and attempted to defraud the insurance company. All this made Sister Dave very annoyed with Uchenna. She suspended plans to make Uchenna a reverend of the church due to him wasting donations and soiling the reputation of the church. And that was the last we heard from Uchenna. There was just time for one more sexually charged email from the now rich Juju just to send the lying scammer on his way and hopefully make him think twice before his next attempt to scam somebody innocent and vulnerable. The checklist was pretty much complete. Photos in his underwear, in his best clothes, travelling a long distance and crossing an international border, five nights away from home, making lots of expensive phone calls, doing mindless tasks, recording a video, and suffering embarrassment. We didn't get that kissing photo, maybe next time. Of course, there are charities in West Africa which do a lot of good. By disrupting scammers in the way we do, hopefully there's more available to donate to charities like these. 